So in today's video, we're going to talk about how to secure your Google account, specifically through the advanced protection program that Google offers free of charge. This video is for those people who choose to have a Google account and would like to improve the security of it. I just wanna point out this is a security improvement, not a privacy improvement. So if you're a YouTuber or you use Google AdSense, or maybe you're my parents who use Gmail, I think this is a beneficial feature to enable. So I wanna start off by talking about what the service actually is. Next, I will go through how to implement it on your account. And then lastly, I'll do some testing on my personal phone, which is running Graphene OS to see if there are any differences once I apply this to my account. And so while the service is free, you will need at least two hardware security tokens. The reason you need two is that once we enable a Google Advanced Protection Program, the only MFA or multi-factor authentication option that will be available is to use hardware keys. If you've seen my video on MFA methods, I talk about hardware keys and how they are the most secure form of multi-factor authentication. One of the main reasons why they are is that they are unfishable. Unlike a text message authentication code or a one-time password in your password manager, which could be fished by a malicious actor. So besides requiring hardware tokens to log into your account, advanced protection also takes extra steps to verify your identity. If someone tries to recover your account, they don't say exactly what the extra steps are that it requires, but seeing that account recovery is a common way for a malicious actor to take over your account, it is nice to have some extra steps, even if we don't know exactly what they are. It also says that it provides extra protection from harmful downloads. So if you're using a Chrome browser that's signed into your Google account, I personally don't use a Chrome browser signed into my Google account, so this is not relevant to me. And one of the last benefits it provides, which I think is actually pretty helpful, is that by default, apps that require high-risk Gmail and Google Drive access are automatically blocked. Exceptions are Google Apps, Apple native iOS apps, and the Mozilla Thunderbird mail client. So recently, Facebook or Meta had some issues where they found out that over 400 malicious Android and iOS apps this year, 2022, targeted people across the internet to steal their Facebook login information. So these attackers were writing malicious apps that would then allow them to steal Facebook login information, which is a huge security issue. So the fact that the advanced protection program blocks a bunch of third-party apps except for a select few from actually accessing your data, that greatly reduces the attack surface and the chances that someone will be able to access your data or potentially your login credentials. It is worth noting that you can disable the advanced protection program at any time on your account. So if you encounter any issues because of the additional restrictions that are in place, you can always go ahead and disable it. Another benefit it provides, besides the extra scanning for harmful downloads, is that on your device, it flags or even blocks you from downloading files that might be harmful, and only app installations from verified stores, such as Google Play Store or your device manufacturer's app store, are allowed. So if you have a Google Pixel running the standard Android OS, you won't be able to sideload any apps or use alternate stores, such as F-Droid. I don't know exactly how this will function on the OS that I run, which is Graphene OS. I'm assuming that since Play Store is installed as a regular app and not actually with system level integration, that this protection will not apply, but we'll find out once I do my testing towards the end. So just in case you're asking yourself, why does Josh seem to be making all these random videos on random topics? Whenever you see a video on a topic like this, it's because I'm actually going ahead and doing this for myself. And this is where I'm at in my security journey. You never actually reach the end in the security journey. There is no destination, you're always improving. So for me, I like to cover what I'm currently doing, different topics, and what I'm up to. So now to actually implement this on my account, we're going to go ahead and click get started. As always, all links will be down below in the description box in case you want to follow along. So I have everything to get us started. Get started. First, you need two security keys, one of them for backup in case you lose it. I also want to mention that you will need your security key in order to sign in on your device. So if you're signed out of your Google account and you go to sign in on your phone and you don't have your security key with you, you will not be able to sign in. The YubiKeys that I bought support NFC which means that I can just tap them to the back of the phone for the phone to actually read them. They also have USB-C, which means I can plug it into the bottom of my device. Google also sells their Titan security key, but I like YubiKey, that's why I went with them. So first step is to add the main key. My USB port's on the back of my computer, so I'll be right back. So I have the security key with me. Next, plugged it into my computer. The next step is to actually insert your security key and touch it. Allow this site to see your security key, allow. I'm going to name the key. So the reason I put the number at the end is so I can tell the keys apart. 
One is actually the last digit in the serial number on my YubiKey. It also is convenient because this is the first YubiKey I'm registering on the site, so the one matches up. But I like to just use the last digit of the serial number to identify which key is registered on a site. And this is convenient in case you need to delete a key at a later time. You can tell them apart. If you lose one, you know which one you lost, which one to delete. Just makes it a little bit easier to identify which one you're actually working with. Done. So we have the first key registered. Let's add a backup. I'm going to name it again. This one has a serial number that ends in seven, which is why I put seven. Done. So we now have our primary and secondary key registered. Next. So before you enroll in Advanced Protection Program, you'll be signed out of all your devices, including this one. To sign back in, you'll need your password and the security key that we just registered. Account recovery will take extra steps. If you lose your security keys and access to your account, it will take a few days to get back into your account. That's something I'm perfectly okay with. And then the last one, non-Google apps are restricted. As I mentioned earlier, iOS apps, calendar, contacts apps, Mozilla Thunderbird will continue to work with accounts in advanced protection. But if you use any other apps that are non-Google apps and you have authorized them to use your Google account data, those will no longer work. Go ahead and click enroll. You'll be signed out of all your devices. Yes, yes, yes. Enroll. You've successfully enrolled. Time to sign back in. So the MFA method I used to have enabled was that one-time code, which is that six-digit number that you that is generated and you type it in. So since we enrolled in the advanced protection program, that method is completely disabled. And as we can see here, the only method available is to use our security key. So I have that plugged into my computer currently. I'm going to go and touch it. Two-step verification, you're all set. Next. So as we can see here, advanced protection program enrolled, manage advanced protection. So like I said earlier, if you want to unenroll, you can do that from here. And then it kind of goes through some of the different things that I already touched on, the app installation, Play Protect, Chrome. Um, down here we can see our security keys. The seven and the one are the two keys that I enrolled. Down here we have our recovery options. One thing I do want to say is that if you do enroll in this, make sure you test both security keys. So I just logged in using the one that ends in a seven. They should both work, but you always want to test to make sure because you don't want to find out that it doesn't work at a time when you actually need that other backup key. So that was pretty straightforward. My account is now enrolled in the advanced protection program. So now that we're enrolled in the advanced protection program, let's do some testing on my mobile device to see if anything has changed. So here we are on my Google Pixel 6 running Graphene OS. I'm on my second user profile where I have a Google Play services installed. Let's go ahead and sign into the Play Store. Type in the password. Next, I'm going to use security key with NFC. All I had to do was touch it to the back of my phone. Felt it vibrate. Something went wrong. Remove your security key and try again. Let's just try again. Don't know why that didn't work. Use your security key. So I'm trying it plugged into my USB port now instead of using NFC. We got a little bit further, it seems like, so let's see, I agree. And we are signed in. So the power of editing, this might've seemed like it was about 10 seconds, but really this is about 10 minutes of back and forth. So it seems like for some reason, I don't know why, the NFC option with my security key did not work. So what I did instead was use the option to plug it into the USB port on my device instead. So I plugged in the security key to the bottom, tapped on the golden disk, and I was able to sign in as you saw. Let's test installing an app quick. So app installation worked as expected. Okay, that's cool. And now it does say that it blocks installation from other third-party app stores. So on here I have Aurora Store. Let's test this out. I'll install a compass again. Okay, so that pretty much confirms what I thought would happen. So like I said earlier, if you have an Android phone that's running stock Android OS, the Google Play services have system level integration to them, which is why I could block installation from other app stores. But on Graphene OS, the Google Play services are installed as regular apps on the phone, and they don't have that system level integration where they can monitor everything else going on. 
So that whole thing about monitoring whatever apps or where you're installing them from does not apply on Graphene OS. But everything else seems to work as expected so far, so that's good at least. So if you have a Google account, take the steps to protect it. You don't want to get compromised. It's a lot easier to take the steps now to protect yourself instead of trying to get your account back from someone who took it over. They took your YouTube channel, deleted all your videos. They took over your AdSense account. Now your boss is pissed because you can't run ad campaigns anymore. Or maybe someone got into your Gmail and sent inappropriate pictures to all of your friends or your parents. 